Okay, let's get this over with. I don't want to waste one more second of your time or mine than I need to talking about this terrible game. Wreck-It Ralph is one of the cheapest, most we-did-not-give-a-damn games that I have ever seen, and I refuse to put more effort into reviewing this game than the programmers put into making it. This was another library rental, in case you couldn't tell. If you haven't seen the movie, Ralph is a video game character who lives in an arcade, the villain of a game called Fix-It Felix Jr. Tired of being a villain, he sets out to try and win a hero's medal by beating a Gears of War clone called Hero's Duty. He ends up stuck in a girly Mario Kart clone called Sugar Rush and accidentally unleashes a horde of cybugs, which are monsters slash viruses, it's not made clear, into the arcade. The movie also has a lot of great messages about responsibility, self-acceptance, and learning to live in your own skin that are completely absent from the video game. In the video game, which takes place after after the movie, Ralph brings a Cybug egg to watch a Sugar Rush race, God only knows why, and he drops the egg and Cybugs invade the arcade again. So Felix and Ralph have to go through Fix-It Felix, Hero's Duty, and Sugar Rush to clear out all of the Cybugs. That's the entirety of the story, and even the minuscule bit of story there is doesn't make any sense. Wreck-It Ralph is a side-scrolling platformer, and it's the easiest damn platformer that I've ever played. I died a grand total of three times over the entire game. Once was because I didn't realize a floor was going to kill me, and once was because I didn't know a platform was about to appear to jump over. The game has puzzles, usually where you have to operate switches or repair control panels to move further into the level, but the puzzles are made to outwit a squirrel. Any player with a functional brain will figure them out immediately. The game has a grand total of four different enemies scattered across the entire game, but you have so much health that you have to pretty much put concentrated effort into getting killed by the enemies. But you can switch between Ralph and Felix as you play the game, except Felix can double jump in a platforming game, and Felix has a projectile attack. So you'll use Felix 90% of the time and only switch to Ralph when you need to use him for a puzzle or when you fight the bosses, all four of which are ridiculously easy, owing partially to your ridiculously long health bar. Didn't one of the best jokes in the movie revolve around the fact that Felix's hammer can only fix things and has no offensive capabilities whatsoever? If they wanted a character with a projectile attack, why didn't they make Calhoun a playable character? Oh right, because that would have required some degree of give a damn. You can play the three worlds in any order that you want, but for some bizarre reason, you're not allowed to fight the bosses until you've beaten all 12 of the game's standard levels. So if, like me, you sit down and play all of the levels from Hero's Duty in one sitting, you'll hit a brick wall where you can't fight the boss until you finish the other the two worlds first, breaking the game's flow like a twig. And even though you're supposedly fighting through three completely different games, a retro arcade game, an FPS, and a racing game, the stages in all three worlds play exactly the same, down to all three worlds having the exact same stage hazards and enemies. To try and emulate the feeling of classic side-scrollers, Wreck-It Ralph is played with just the Wii Remote held sideways like an NES controller. Except to use Ralph's charge attack and Felix's hammer throw, you have to press the B button, which is underneath the controller and super awkward to press when you're holding the controller this way. You have to press the A button to switch characters, which requires you to take your thumb off the control pad to press the button, which also feels awkward. And to operate switches or repair consoles, you have to press and hold the minus button, which is also out of reach. The controls are just awkward. I know they were trying to emulate retro games, but these controls would have been so much more comfortable if they just let you use a nunchuck so you have more buttons in easy reach. That's honestly all there is to say about the game. It's a bare-bones basic platformer with bland enemies that's way too easy and the controls are awkward. But the game is at least playable and it's not torture like some of the games I review. But there's one big thing that really sinks the game. Guess how long it took me to beat the game? Ballpark it within a half hour or so. Six hours? Five hours? Surely it's not below four hours, that's like the absolute minimum for games these days. You wanna know how long it took me to beat the game? ONE HOUR AND TWENTY-EIGHT MINUTES! It took an hour and a half to beat this game! It's even shorter than the damn movie! Oh, but once you beat the final boss, the game invites you to play the Game Plus mode, where you play the exact same levels again, only with time limits and extra enemies. Wow! So, what you're telling me is, Activision thought they could get away with making a game that was less than half of what is generally accepted as the bare minimum length of a game if they just tell players to play the game twice. No! We're not buying it! We're not gonna let you get away with that shit! Where the hell do you get off charging $50 for a game that only lasts for an hour and a half? Especially, especially when you're making a side-scroller on the Wii and your game's direct competition is New Super Mario Bros. Brothers Wii, Kirby's Return to Dreamland, Donkey Kong Country Returns, or hell, the dozens of side scrollers on the Virtual Console that are five to eight dollars a pop. All of those games are like six times longer than yours. And the Game Plus mode sucks anyway. 
One, there aren't more enemies than the normal game, it's just that enemies take more damage before dying. Two, some of the levels are very poorly designed to where you can't advance past a certain point without taking damage, and taking damage multiple times. Minor annoyance in the regular mode, absolute death trap in the game plus mode since you have less health. And the game plus mode takes away your checkpoints so you have to start over if you die. So even if you do decide to play the game a second time on the game plus mode, the game plus mode is just going to piss you off. Wreck-It Ralph is a great movie, and it deserves much better than to be desecrated by this absolutely zero-effort piece of crap. There are so many things that you could have done with Wreck-It Ralph. You could have given each arcade game vastly different gameplay mechanics to take advantage of the fact that you're game-hopping, make the hero's duty levels into shooters, and Sugar Rush into a Wheelie Breakers-style racing game where you shoot at Cybug Racers. You could have done what Deadpool did and make a ton of fourth-wall jokes revolving around the self-aware characters. Well, use the money I transferred to your account and patch this shit! Now! You could have made the cybugs cause so much damage to the games they're in that the games start to glitch up like enemies won't stop spawning or gravity goes screwy. There was so much potential that was just pissed away by a dev team that was phoning it in to make a corporate deadline. NOBODY GAVE A RAT'S ASS ABOUT THIS GAME AND YOU SHOULDN'T EITHER!